as you can see, I am a Franciscan. I am a follower of St. Francis, whom I call my father in Christ. St. Francis was an extraordinary saint. He is known to everyone in the Western world, even if they don't know much about him. His influence on European art and music and literature has kept scholars happy for a long time. But we are thinking of him as a Christian, as a poor, humble man who tried to follow in the footsteps of our Lord. You see, Christianity is Christ. And a Christian must try to be a plagiarist of Christ, a shadow of Christ, another Christ. St. Francis is thought to be the truest of Christians. And he lived in the 13th century. He influenced so many people in so many ways of every age and rank that he can truly be called a man for all seasons and certainly a man for this season. Because the 13th century was not unlike our own. It was the end of an era. There were wars. The feudal system was collapsing. There was restlessness and there was wealth. Francis Bernardone was a child of his age. His parents gave him everything. He knew revelry by night and elegance by day. He had friends, a host of friends, with whom he shared laughter and music and romance. And then suddenly, he grew weary of it all. That sort of life nauseated him. And he left home and he became a wanderer. And with his extraordinary intuition, he delved into the riddle and solved the mystery. And he discovered the reason for it all was love. God's love that created everything and sustained everything. God's love that created him and sustained him, the father from whom he came to whom he was returning. Now Francis could never be the same. He saw the Lord round every corner of the dusty roads in Italy, new incentives for love everywhere in everything, and he cried out that love is not love. He is called the poor man, il poverello. Wouldn't it be more true to call him the rich man, the richest man in the world, because he had the security, the stability, the serenity, the peace that is as immutable as God himself? Who today in our restless world would not give his right arm to have the peace that St. Francis had. So many have discovered, after searching for it, in riches, in pleasure, in amusement, that there is still an ache, a void, a loneliness, a longing. They have not found what they were seeking. Francis did. You see, what you and I are seeking is peace that can be found in God alone. My dear friends, you and I cannot live without peace. We need peace for our soul as much as we need air for our body. We cannot even die without peace. For when we will be put in the grave, they will pray that we may rest in peace. Peace is what was promised the night our Lord was born. Glory to God in the highest, the angel sang, and peace on earth to men and women of goodwill. Peace was his own legacy to us when he was returning to his father. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Did you ever stop to think of the number of times we ask for peace during Mass. And the last thing the priest says, 
The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Francis is our inspiration in this age. We must learn from him to find the peace we crave. He loved Our Lady. He was the first founder of a religious order to dedicate his order to Our Lady. And she is part of our Franciscan heritage. This day, here we are with our weak faith, our inconstant hope, and our fitful love. And we say the prayer St. Francis composed that we, his sons, say every day. O great and glorious God and my Lord Jesus Christ, enlighten, I beseech you, the darkness of my mind. Give me a right faith, a firm hope, and a constant charity. Grant that I may know you, O Lord, so that always and in all things I may act according to your most holy and perfect will. Amen. God bless you.